but ladies, I have an amazing guest with us. Our co-host, who is none other than Sue Carney. Sue, how's it going today? Thanks, great. How about you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for joining me. It is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, as we all know, and also Domestic Violence Awareness Month. But this session, we want to just focus on breast cancer awareness and have a little bit of conversation about, you know, that discovery, you know, that 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 C diagnosis that no one wants to hear. And I'd love for you to share a little bit about your journey and some tips for nutrition and health and healing. But first, I want to tell everyone a little bit about how amazing you are. Is that okay? Sure. Thank you. Thanks for having me as a guest. Sue Carney is a 21-year breast cancer survivor. This woman is the epitome of what it means to be a warrior, a fighter, a victor, one who has celebrated life and through her life's journey and challenges and struggles, she is a beacon of hope and light and inspiration for all who are following in her path, those that are in the fight or may have already overcome. Uh, and again, I just appreciate her willingness to share her story She's also a 15-year realtor. She's been married 36 years. How amazing is that? She has two beautiful children, and she has a health and wellness franchise. And guess what, ladies? She has an incredible passion and zeal for God, and she weaves all of these together to, again, spread messages of hope, of light, and of love. Sue, so thank you so much for joining me. And, you know, when we think about cancer, and there's so many cancers out there. Um, the last thing that anyone wants to hear when they go for their, you know, their wellness checkup is, you know, we found something and that something is the big C. And I wasn't diagnosed with breast cancer, but I was diagnosed six years ago with lymphoma, which is a form of blood cancer, which I'm still battling. Mm. But I want to focus on you know, the breast cancer, because we know obviously it impacts, impacts women, but men also are, um, are victimized by, by this. But, you know, and I've interviewed several people with breast cancer, but you are the first one that I've interviewed that's been a 21 year survivor. So I want to just turn this over to you and however much you want to share, however transparent you wish to be. Um, I'm going to just allow you to, to have the floor. And then if I have any questions, I'll feed in. Is that okay? Sure. That sounds great. <laughs> okay, great. When I told my story before, it took over an hour. So I've tried to condense it. Um, I am writing a book. So hopefully by next year, <laughs> it will be out. Congratulations. <laughs> I appreciate the honor to be on here. And if it can help one person, that's what, what I care about. So I just want to go over what happened from the very beginning, the journey, the struggle, and then the healing and, mm -hmm. and how I got, how I got there. So first I want to give God all the glory. <laughs> this is a tribute yeah. to him. Um, I would not be cancer free today if it wasn't for his grace, his mercy, and his strength. Mm -hmm. And um, it was this time of year that I stepped out of the shower and I was in my thirties and I was drying myself off. Um, I was not doing any self checks at this point cause I'm only in my thirties. So I, I happen to feel something, you know, in that part of the body, my breast, and um, it just didn't feel right. And I said something to my husband, which normally something like that, I would just brush it, you know, into the carpet. But I believe the Lord let me say something to him because he has, um, he knows about medical stuff. Plus his mother had breast cancer and passed mm -hmm. away of breast cancer. So he has some knowledge. So he said, I'm not trying to alarm you, but you need to make an appointment with the doctor tomorrow. And I did. And I went in there. I had my friend, girlfriend, Claudia go in with me. I was not, I never have anyone go with me to an appointment. I'm, you know, it's an appointment. Right. It's my first mammogram. Yeah. And wow. so what happens to make a long story short, it's abnormal, but 
the nurses are not supposed to show anything. Only the radiologist is supposed to break the news to me or an oncologist. So, so they're, they're scurrying around, you know, they're looking all, you know, not good. And I'm so it's scaring me. So I don't know what to expect. I don't know what's going to happen next. So they just say something about this complications. I don't know what that is. When my mother had breast cancer at 62, she had the surgery. She didn't have chemo. And that was the end of that. She went on with her life. <laughs> so I don't know much about this big C word. So I, I, they immediately set the appointment up with my doctor. I go in to see him. He's a Christian, but it's not my regular doctor. It's just the group R. So as soon as I get into the room, my friend's there. He's there, the nurse. He says, let's hold hands and pray. Well, normally I would, you know, really be happy about that. <laughs> but at this point, I don't know what's going on. So to me, that's alarming if he's starting out the appointment like this. So the next thing I know, um, he doesn't give me much information. Um, I just know there's two tumors and there's calcification. And um, I text my girlfriend who's been an oncology nurse at the University of Tennessee Hospital for 25 plus years. And I tell her what's going on. She immediately texts her boss, the oncologist. He's the head guy in the Southeast. A guy had me covered. Let me just say that. So he, he answers her within five minutes. He says, get the, get the films from them or I'll have them sent down. If you can hand deliver it, that would be quicker. I need you to go to my cancer center. So they go in there, they take a biopsy. I then go to my first appointment with him. And he is pretty serious. And he says, you and I are a team, not your friend, not your husband, me and you. He goes, because we're going to have to stick through this together. And he, he writes down, he, he draws a diagram on the tissue paper that you lay on. And he says, okay, there's two tumors. Um, they are roughly 1.4-ish. And then there's one that's under 0.6 or 0.8 um it's called ductal carcinoma and one's evasive and one's invasive meaning it can spread um he says there's calcifications which that means is precancerous cells surrounding it so he says you know we we have a plan and he right away says not the death death sentence this is not the death sentence, which that's what I need to hear. Because <laughs> at this point, this is all the unknown for me. And I just want to say that, you know, sometimes we get hit with the unknown, something we've never experienced before, and it could try to throw you off course. It can try to throw you for a loop that you don't, your mind doesn't even know how to process it. So that's what was trying to happen. So when he says this, I just, I'm taking it all in. I'm, processing it. My husband's turning white as a ghost. He's saying, are you okay, Mr. Carney? You know, I'm just taking it all in. And um, he says, we're going to schedule surgery. And then um, because of your age for preventative only, unless it goes in the lymph nodes, we're only going to, we're going to do four chemo treatments, no radiation. You're at stage one. You caught it. God, <laughs> I give him the credit. He, he helped me catch it. So um, after the surgery, the chemo was pretty tough on me. Um, I found somebody that knew about cancer. Her dad had lung cancer, and she told me to get a hold of a book on nutrition. And during the chemo, if I could flood my body with this nutrition, which I did certain things, which if anybody is out there that wants the things I did, I did things physically and spiritually. Um, this really ended up being a fight for my mind because let, let me ask you one question again, because you, yeah. I just want our audience to understand you were in your early thirties, right? You had never had a mammogram, right? You, you, it was self-discovery. And then that's when you went in, right? So ladies, this is why it's so important to do 
those those monthly exams or just be aware of your body because it it's communicating with you every single day, every minute of the day. But being aware is so key. So thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks for saying that. So I just, you know, I couldn't eat a whole lot during the chemo. Um, I did certain things, you know, supplementing and protein shakes that was some nutrition. And I did a lot of juicing too. So I got through that and he said that he, he was amazed at how I was through the, through all that. So I had hair down to roughly about here, like my hair. I think there's something in the Bible that a woman's hair is her glory. Well, it was mine. <laughs> I was, I was a little bit vain about it. I, I, I have to admit, you know, so as I'm taking the chemo by the second chemo, all of it's coming out. And I, and when it really started coming out, like almost 90%, I mean, I was crying. And thank God for a support system. I had my husband, my family, my friends. Now, I did not want everyone to know because I only wanted positive people around me. So I had a sister-in-law that she, she died of lung cancer, but she was willing to hop on a plane to be with me. I mean, I'm floored by what the, the diagnosis is. So I get through all that and that was pretty devastating, just facing the unknown and just um, getting this news, you know, of the big C word. And I never really, I, I, before this, I had never been sick really. Like I was a healthy, thriving young mother, never sick. So people would come up to me. I was a Girl Scout mom too. And the Girl Scout mothers found, some of them found out. They said, you, do you feel okay? And I'd say, I feel great. I mean, it's a silent disease with, with breast cancer. Some people have pain if it's gone like to different stages, but I didn't. So then after all that's over, after the surgery, then they call me. Um, it's a Friday. And they say, I just want you to know that the cancer has not spread anywhere. It is not in the lymph nodes. And I wanted you to have a good weekend. <laughs> so... So that was a big relief, you know, that was a huge relief. And then after the, the whole chemo and the surgery and everything, we went on a Girl Scout trip to celebrate and we went to Tybee Island and I, I had a wig. Yeah, I had to wear wigs, that was challenging. I would put it back like this and wear a baseball cap so it felt normal, but it was, it was that was challenging, the hair thing. I know that sounds ridiculous, but for me it was. And the nauseous, being nauseous all the time, that was tough. Um, surgery wasn't that tough for me. Um, but what I did, I want to go into, you know, during this whole thing, when you're faced with a crisis of health, financial, any kind of way, your mind wants to jump and say, what's going to happen? Am I going to die? Will I see, you know, how long will, will, will I see grandkids <laughs> like 30 years from now, you know? You, you got all these thoughts that are constantly coming at you. So I had to grab a hold of my mind from, from day one. Every appointment that I went into, I had scripture verses from the Bible on healing on me. If I didn't have a pocket, it was on my body. It was on my dashboard. It was everywhere. I flooded my mind. You know, I'm, I don't know, everyone might not be Christian on here. I don't, you know, it doesn't matter if you're Muslim, if you're Hindu, if you're Christian. You have to flood your mind with the right thoughts to overcome something or it will overcome you. So that was part of what got me to the healing. I did that day in and day out. Um, I play guitar. I couldn't play, but I listened to, to Christian music and music that helped bring my mind to another place. Um, cause sometimes I couldn't read, I would, I didn't feel up to it <laughs> and, um, people came and helped friends came and helped and some cooked and cleaned and everybody, you know, try to really pitch in. So some of the things I did and learned is I flooded my mind with God's word on healing. I, I never let myself get to a point where. I didn't believe that I was going to get better or get healed. I, I mean, there were days that I, I crawled <laughs> to the juicing machine because my husband was working to juice and to clean that machine because for the next one. 
Um, and then I made sure I had a support system. And, you know, if you all want to know the steps I did in the healing, you know, like one, two, three, four, I can lay it out for you. Um, I, now I know a lot more about health since all that happened, a passion for health happened to me, a real passion for self-care because here's how I was before. And maybe you all can relate. <laughs> maybe, I mean, I still, I'm challenged with this before. Um, I'm a realtor now, but I was a stay at home mom for about eight years and my calendar, my husband would look at my calendar and he'd say, do you think you're superwoman? Nobody can do that calendar. Take three things off. So, you know, he was trying to look out for me, but I really wasn't listening. And then I had a minister, like I helped a lot with these church big meetings and stuff. I would help, help the leaders. And this one leader took me out for lunch and that, that was an unusual appointment. So he goes, well, last week I noticed you know, your skirt wasn't, wasn't ironed. And I thought he's, he's not that kind of preacher. Like he's very laid back. And I thought that's weird. So he said, I'm saying this for a purpose. This is before the breast cancer. He says, you're taking care of the whole world, even the church, everybody. I know who you are, Sue. And you, you're putting yourself last. And I tried to listen, but I, I really didn't. So I'm not saying that God put the breast cancer on me because I don't believe that, but I do know that I learned from it. I learned now what I do to this day, 21 years later, <laughs> this, is, this is some of the things. Stop putting myself last. Don't say yes to everybody. It's okay to say no. It's not what they need. When you make a decision, if you should say yes to something, is it going to be good for you? not just for them, um, to really take control of my health. After the four chemo treatments, I joined a gym and I worked out every day faithfully. And my two girlfriends helped me be accountable. We met at the gym every morning at 9 a.m., no excuses. And I had a, 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 I really believe God did this. I had, I, like you have so many free fitness coach trainings and my coach, one of my coaches who ended up being my coach, he was really good. And I thought, this guy's really like, there's something about him. Well, he was very low key and he was training for the Olympics and he actually won the gold for the pole vaulting uh, a year or two later. But what was great about him is he knew what I had just come out of. So he really handled me with care. He knew that I, you know, I can't do everything right away. So I had that and worked out at the gym for a year and I continue to work out. Um, I put the right things in my body. Um, I, I, I can't hear you. Are you right. Cause I'm on mute. <laughs> oh, sorry sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. You said a lot of, <laughs> of, of powerful statements here. Um, and you're right. We can learn from our trials and tribulations if we want to see the lesson in it. And sometimes when we're going through um, those most painful times in life, you know, I like to call it the dark place of the soul. We, we want to say there's, there's nothing for me to learn. Or we, we asked the why me questions and yeah. you know, it's like, what do you hope it, do you wish it were be that it would be someone else? Of course not. Um, but I, what I hear you saying, even in your young age of being in your early thirties, that your your faith in God gave you the strength to press on, but also in God through his grace and mercy, he put all of these people in your path that aligned with your truth, yeah. aligned with, with this particular journey. <clears throat> and our, our community, our Celebrate You community, it is comprised of people of different faiths, but most people here do believe that in God. Mm -hmm. And and if you don't, it's okay. But we wanted Sue to come on to share her journey because there is some truth in her journey because she's still here and, and she's vibrant and she's loving life and celebrating life. 
And I hope that those of you who are listening, and that's why we put this title here, I Will Survive is more than just a song. It's, it, this is beyond survival. She is living. She is thriving. And is showing you through these little snippets of how you too can get over, whether it's, whether it's cancer, whether it's, you know, the grief of loss of someone there, there's messages of hope in all of this. And we're going to share with you more on how you can get in touch with, with Sue and uh, just, you know, pick her brain and, and, and understand more about this, about this journey. And, and I like what you said here about stop putting yourself last. How often, Sue, do we as women, we're trying to serve and be nurturing and do everything for everyone else. And we justify it, right? That's the role. That's what we're supposed to do. And we, you know, we proudly don this, you know, superwoman cloak. But then inside we're broken or we're not, we're not taking care of ourselves health wise. And you pause and said, wait a minute, I got to take care of myself. It's okay for me to say no if it's not benefiting me. And I'm going to do those things that are beneficial for me. And I'm going to take care of my physical health. I'm going to be, I'm going to love myself so much that I, I, I get away from the word intending to, I'm going to commit to. And there's a huge difference in being intentional and being committed. And what I hear from everything that you've shared with us is you committed to a journey of wellness, of wholeness, mind, body, soul, and spirit. Yes, yes. you really coined that well. <laughs> you really coined that well. I just wanted to say one other thing that's really key that, that, I, that I do to this day especially let's say you're a busy woman, you have a family, you have work, you have responsibilities without fail. Like I pray and do that, but without fail, I take 15 to 30 minutes a day where I'm in a peaceful environment, whether it be outside on my deck or in the sunroom. And I just don't, I don't think any thoughts, but grateful thoughts. I guess they call that mindfulness or something, but I mean, I thank my God, but I'm just thinking about what I'm grateful for, like my health, my family, my friends, just f like just kind of letting my mind decompose. And I do that 15 to 30 minutes every day. Um, and then another thing, you know, that I really this one scripture really helped me through this whole thing. Well, one of the sayings, this too shall pass. I had to keep saying that, even though it's not scripture, but um, it, there's a scripture that says, in the multitude of my thoughts, thy comforts delight my soul. It may not be word for word. So we have a lot of thoughts that come at us. If, if you've lived life to any degree, you have thoughts coming at you. You have bad thoughts and you have good thoughts, but you have to learn how to filter it <laughs> or the bad ones will take over. So in this situation, that's a big thing that I had to really take hold of. And, you know, my strength, I had, you know, nobody can believe like when you're in a healing situation or a crisis, people can pray for you and they can believe with you, but you really have to take the bull by the horns and you got to have belief. You have to have belief that you're going to make it through. You have to, you got to do something about it. Unless you're incapacitated and you can't think, you know what I mean? But so I just want to say that this time of year, Thanksgiving is a big deal for me um, every year because it's not about the holiday. It's really about, I'm grateful to be alive. And it's, it's, uh, not coincidental that you had me doing it today because Thanksgiving's around the corner <laughs> and I'll be celebrating me. I'll be celebrating my life. So I just want to thank, you know, everyone for listening. Uh, there's a lot more to this story. I, you know, in the book that I planned to get out by next year, I'll, I'll give more of the, you know, de details. Um, but I just want to say that if you're being challenged with a health crisis of any kind, whether it be the big C word, COVID, whatever, you know, get around people that are going to lift you up, not down and learn how, you know, learn about nutrition, learn how to put the right things in your body, learn what self care is about, learn how to grab a hold of your mind. Like when you're sick, 
it's the hardest time to grab a hold of your mind when you're hurting. So that's why you need, sometimes you need support from people. Um, you, you know, your doctor sometimes will give support, but I get my support from the Lord. So you've got to have, sometimes within your own self, when you're, when you're in a situation like I was in, you have to grab strength from beyond you. And, you know, that's why I started this out saying that I give God all the credit and this is a tribute to him. And that's why I stand here today healed. <laughs> but I did certain things. It's not like I just said, God, take over. You know, you're going to heal me. Everything's going to be wonderful. I did all that I could do. And then I believed that he would come along and with his grace and mercy, he would do the rest. I, I love that. And, and that, that is so true that we, we have to play our, we have to play our part, right? We could sit and say, okay, well, I'm just going to trust and pray, but I'm still going to eat my donuts because I'm feeling bad for myself. I'm going to have my pity party and I'm not going to get out there and do my treatments. No, we, we have a role to play and we only have there. We have an individual on our, on our program and her name is Jacqueline Young Landy. And she wrote a book called, this is not a practice life. And her whole mission is we have one life to live ladies and whatever may come your way, because there's ebbs and flows in life. So tsunamis will come, but through grace, through, through God's love and mercy, we're able to rise up to that challenge. And sometimes the mountain doesn't move, right? Mm -hmm. But that mountain becomes our test, which then becomes our testimony. Right. And I am just very emotional right now because you give me hope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So thank you. I'm glad that you could do that. Just, you know, <laughs> I think the biggest thing in a, when you're in a challenging situation or you feel like you're up against the wall, just what I've seen in life, I've been challenged in many other ways, financially, a lot of ways, is you have, you, in order for worry not to set in or anxious thoughts, you got to really live one day at a time. You exactly. can prepare for your future, but you have, if you, if you're worrying about always worrying about what's going to happen later, you're, you're having your, the anxiety comes in. So I found that if I live one day at a time and live it to the fullest, to the best that I can, that it brings more peace that way. Yeah, I agree 100%. And like you said, if we're so worried about the, you know, what ifs in life, yeah. you know, that is totally fear because it hasn't come yet. And you're so focused on all the possibilities and they're, they're endless that you miss the now. You miss the beauty of now because this is when life is happening, this beautiful, precious moment. And sometimes, like you said, you go one day at a time. Sometimes it actually goes moment to moment. And sometimes it's breath to breath, depending on where you are in that journey. And give yourself some grace, you know, and, and ease up. <laughs> ease yeah. up and just celebrate um, yeah. the moment. And I, I want to share this quick little story. Um, this is before the vaccines came out. My cousin was diagnosed with COVID. He was in Sue, the hospital for 249 days. He was on a ventilator for over half that time. The doctors had totally given up on him. They said, your lungs are totally white. You're not going to make it out. Mm -hmm. he, he, was, he got out one day before Thanksgiving. Wow. And when we talk to him now, it, his story is very similar to yours. He, um, because his family knew of his faith. So they said, okay, we know he's on the ventilator and we don't know what he can or cannot hear. But they told the doctors, they said, you've got to keep playing these scriptures over and over and over for him. Yeah. And he's, you know, he says, I did hear it. You know, obviously I can't communicate mm -hmm. because of the vent. Um, but he is just, again, like you, this amazing miracle of, of victory and God's grace. Yeah. And we just have to keep pressing and yeah. trusting and believing and never give up. Right. Yeah. I think expecting too, you know, when you're in the middle of, of this kind of thing, 
it's hard to see yourself beyond it. But I think it's important with belief to, I learned some of this from my mentors that I have, having belief, you have to have a vision or the people perish. So you have to see yourself healed already. Like, how would you look if you felt 100% healed? What would that look like? And then picture yourself, get a picture of yourself where you've just had no worries, <laughs> no health issue. Get a look at that picture every day. That, that's what I do with all the, you know, the goals I have. I look like I keep it in front of me, my dreams. Um, I want to help other women. I want to help other people. Like I keep that dream in front of me. So it's, it's important in healing to keep that vision of yourself healed. Yes, I love that. And, I, and I'm so thankful that you're willing to, to share your story with individuals and also to give them the tips and tools for help. So you can reach out to Sue Carney at suecarney01 at AOL.com. Text or call her at 865-556-4030. Nutritional tips at ampheart.vasayo.com. Please, please, please check out Sue Carney. You will be happy that you did. And Sue, I'm so glad that you wanted to come on and share with our community. This really meant a lot to us and um, helping us to really promote and enhance the importance of being aware of self and promoting uh, the awareness of breast cancer. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm glad I could um, talk about it and maybe say one thing that gives hope. <laughs> Well, before you go, I have a quick little video to play, and then I'm going to close this out, okay? All right. way. So Sue, again, thank you so very much. Ladies, love yourself. Remember, you got to take care of you first. Love yourself. Embrace yourself. This You have one life to live. Live it to the fullest. And whatever you do, just like Sue Carney is doing every single day, remember to celebrate you. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much, Sue. Bye-bye.